Hello, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at some Jane Doe's as well as some missing persons. So the first Jane Doe I have was found May 10th, 1984 in Cobb County, Georgia. She was estimated to be between the ages of 18 and 25 years old. Estimated year of death is said to be 1983 to 1984. It says she was estimated to be 5 foot tall and estimated to be 105 pounds. The body of the deceased was discovered in a wooded area near the Chattahoochee River in southwest Cobb County. The owner of the property discovered the body lying in a bed of pine straw and briars had grown up partially over the body. Not recognizable, near complete or complete skeleton, brown auburn synthetic wig. Brown hair, auburn brown synthetic wig. Um, surgical pins present in the left ankle. Didn't I just see somebody missing that had surgical pins in their ankle? Why don't I remember these things? Plastic plate and wire suture on right side of face. So it sounds like she had been hurt pretty bad a few, few times, right? Um, in the skirt pocket was a pack of camel cigarettes. Also in the pocket was a small envelope containing two apparent cigarette butts that were hand-rolled marijuana, maybe? Question mark. The arms of the deceased are clothed in a long sleeve blouse that was of a Western style with frilly ruffles around the front. The body was covered with a brown rust-colored corduroy coat that appeared to be a man's jacket. It has a riches label and was size 40 large. Also lying draped over the upper torso of the body was a man's shop shirt that was light in color with rolled up long sleeves and was unbuttoned. There was the name George on the label on the front as well as the label Doug Hyde Unlimited. Near the foot was a single light colored socks with vertical blue and brown stripes. Between the leg area of the deceased was a wadded up blue short sleeve pullover shirt with a Playboy bunny on it. A pair of blue jeans was near the foot. On the left foot was a boot that was light in color, somewhat western style with a thick fleece lining. The other boot was lying over the lower part of the body, metal plate in left boot. And then there's pictures that you can look up. Okay. So... And this is their artist's rendering of what she may have looked like. And the haircut creeps me out. It makes me feel like she had longer hair and somebody chopped it off and didn't do a very good job. But I don't know if that's just the way they tried to do her artist's rendering. And they just weren't good at cutting the hair when they did it. Or if that's the way her hair might have been. And then we have this girl, Martha Jean McNeil. Now, she was missing from North Carolina March 18, 1984. She was 24 years old, and she was 5 foot tall and 105 pounds, which is what they estimated that person to be was 5 foot tall and 105 pounds. She was last seen at her mother's residence in 1984. Blonde, strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes, scar on her upper lip. Timex watch, mother of pearl ring, turquoise ring. It doesn't mention any of those um, metal pins or anything, though. But I just felt like looking at the picture of her, I just thought it looked very similar to her in the chin and stuff. Okay, so then we have this gr girl. And it, because of the way the hair is, it looked like somebody... It reminded me of her. Even though this can't be her, it reminded me of her, and I felt like... I wonder if whoever had killed her, had, if she was murdered, if that had been her, if they had chopped her hair off or something. I don't know. So she was 5'3 to 5'4, 107 pounds, which is taller, of course, than this person. And she went missing in 1969. So, like I said, I don't think it's her. It's just that it reminded me of her when I saw the um, artist's rendering. And you can pause this and read it if you like to, because this was... Also in Cobb County. But like I said, the year was way off and everything. But it did remind me of her when I saw it. Okay, and then we have this missing person 
Faye Aileen Self went missing from Louisiana, which is pretty far away. And she was 26 years old, about 5 feet tall, and about 110 pounds. Last seen at the Wagon Wheel Bar in the company of one female. Uh, Lucretia and two white males. Strawberry blonde hair. Hair was bleach blonde from brown. Gray eyes. White Levi pants and multicolored shirt. Gold colored necklace with yellow watch with flex band. And see, it doesn't mention any ankle pins or anything like that. And this picture right here of her, even though this picture looks different, this picture kind of reminded me of them as well. Okay, so then we have this Jane Doe. Doesn't she look similar to? And she was found June 25th, 1993, also in Cobb County, Marietta. Not recognizable, partial skeleton parts only. She was 5'3", 100 pounds. Very petite women, age 25 to 30 years old. Hip length, short sleeve jacket, white halter top, scarf and orange pink diamond print design. Lightweight, blousy, elastic waistband slacks, 24 inch long strand of white beads. Um, you can pause this and read it if you want to. Safety pin and slacks. The skeletal remains were discovered at a construction site on Shufflegret Road. So, five foot three, a hundred pounds in Marietta, Georgia, and we're gonna see who's missing. This girl right here went missing in 1986, 1986 to 1983. That's what seven years later she was 13, so she would have been 20 years old at the time. 25 average. I think it looks so much like her. That I keep wondering if it's not her. Because I really think this looks like her. She went missing in Sylvania, Georgia. Brown hair, hazel eyes, moles across her back. Both ears pierced. Possibly had a previous cracked collarbone. Cracked wrist and broken nose. Wow. Katerina Jackson was last seen May 30th, 1986 in her hometown of Sylvania, Georgia. She was en route to school. She never arrived and she's never been seen or heard from again. And that was in 1986. That was 1984. And this one is 1993. I don't know if that could be her or not, but it reminded me of her. This girl went missing in Norcross, Georgia in 1989. She was 5'1 to 5'3, 110, 125 pounds. Strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes. What just blossed those blonde hair, right? Several scars on the front of her legs from a barbed wire fence tattoo of the word love on fingers, ankle tattoo. Last known to be with her ex husband, who she divorced 25 years ago. Her family has not heard from her in 30 years. Uh, Smyrna, Georgia, Cobb County. This lady went missing in 1992. She was 5'3 five to 5'5, five five, 27 years old, 110 to 125 pounds, bleached blonde hair, blue eyes. Let's see. Last known to be seen between 24:30 and 1 o'clock Saturday, September 5th, 1992. She left her apartment. Walking to the Buckboard, a local county dance bar about a mile away. She was to meet friends there, but never arrived and has never been seen from since. The route she took would have been north on Lake Park Drive, then east on Windy Hill Road. Um, this girl went missing from Rockdale, Georgia in 1981. She was 5'5", five five, 155 pounds, blonde hair, brown eyes. Disappeared from Rockdale, Georgia. January 29th, 1991. Sometime between 7.30 and 16.45, the times when her children left for and returned from school. The back door of the residence was kicked open, and a window pane in the door from the garage was broken. Blood was found in the house and carport. Nothing was taken from the home. A white pickup truck was seen in the area during this period. Her automobile, a 1985 tan and black Chevrolet S10 Blazer, was found the next day in DeKalb County behind Decatur High School. Blood was found in the vehicle. The keys were left in the vehicle 
and cash was placed in plain view of what investigators believe was an effort to bait the vehicle for potential car thieves. Investigators believe that at least two people were involved in the abduction. She was living with her two sons and had been separated from her husband since November 1989. She and her husband were scheduled to finalize their divorce and disposition of property at 1700 the day she disappeared. Wow. Um, Nancy Stewart Franco Williams, endangered missing March 1st, 1988 from Sandy Springs, Fulton County, Georgia, which is right there by Atlanta. You know, we consider that Atlanta when we go October 9th, 1961, which is when she was born, 26 years old. She was 5'3", 100 pounds, reddish brown, bleach blonde when last seen, blue eyes, nicknamed Bobby Joe. Tattoo of the letters J E N F R across her knuckles. Known as Bobby Joe, was living with a man in Sandy Springs. She did not know much about him, but she told her mother she was afraid of him and wanted to get away. They stayed in motels in the Wheeling, West Virginia area when they went to visit family and friends in Ohio because he was supposed to have dealings of some sort there. The family has not heard from Nancy since March 1988. Her family says it's uncharacteristic of her to be out of touch with him for so long because of no contact for so many years. Her family fears foul play. And let's see. We have this lady that was missing from Alabama since December 25th, 1992. She was 5'3", 115 pounds, 37 years old. Strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes. Peggy was last seen at War Horse Lounge in Gadsden with friends. No one remembers seeing her past midnight. Her purse and other belongings were found near a burned out Rainbow City nightclub. In March 1993, no other evidence concerning the case was found at the site. Her car was located several weeks later in the parking lot of a Gadsden apartment complex. In the car were some of her personal items. The car may have been parked at the complex for several months. Peggy may be in the Jacksonville, Florida. She lived with her mother until her disappearance. And then we have Angel Angela Pitt Smith went missing November 13th, 1989. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 24 years old, 5'310 pounds, black hair, green eyes. Her hair looks lighter than black, doesn't it? Nickname Angie, scar scars on eyebrow, lip, abdomen, right and left thigh. Gives a description of what she was wearing. She's been missing under suspicious circumstances from her Shady Lane Parkway home since November 13, 1989. Her husband, George Smith, filed a missing persons report with the sheriff's office November 16th when he told police he and his wife argued briefly the night before she disappeared. The next morning after he made breakfast for the two of his three children from her previous marriage and then sent them to school. Smith said his wife got out of bed and packed two suitcases, which he described as black and gray canvas luggage, and told him she was leaving him. He said she left in her 1981 Mercedes. Smith told police it was the last time he saw her. November 17, Smith went to New Orleans looking for his wife's car. He said he'd found the automobile in the long-term parking lot of the New Orleans airport with a parking stub inside showing the car had been there since November 13th, the day she disappeared. Detectives discovered that Smith's second wife, Sheila L. Smith, 33, was murdered in their home February 12, 1985, in St. Laundry Parish. Her body was found by her husband. Smith was later convicted of arranging the murder for hire for his second wife. In 1987, a woman who had been living with Smith in Lafayette was found dead in her apartment. She was a victim of an apparent suicide shooting. However, evidence existed that led police to suspect the woman had not attempted suicide, but no charges were filed in the case. Investigators seized um, 500000 life insurance policy taken out by George Smith on Angela Smith. George Smith, who was convicted of arranging the murder for hire of his second wife and suspected in the disappearance of his third wife, died in prison in March 2000. Angela Pitt Smith was declared legally dead in March 1993. Her body has never been found. So those are the Jane Doe's and the missing persons. 
in this video. Um, if you have any information about any of these people, please contact authorities and let them know. Even if you feel like it's hearsay, it's not like you're going to testify in court. You're just giving them information to help them hopefully be able to solve the cases or case. Um, feel free to if you if you're if you've given them the information in the past, you're not sure if they still have it because it's been recorded in different ways and it's gone through different detectives. And you can email them and you can email and CC like a detective, the police department and the sheriff's department to make sure that it's gone to three different people or in case one of the emails don't work. And that way you can see that they hold each other accountable with the information so that they do something with it. Um, or you can write letters if you want to remain more anonymous. Or you might could call them if you like. Anyway, just please contact them with any information that you feel might help them to solve the case. And like I said, if you're not sure if it's relevant, let them decide what's relevant and what's important and what's not. As long as you give them the information. And don't forget to pray for their families or loved ones. Um, feel free to leave comments and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.